Aloha and welcome to the Wolverine.com podcast. Clayton Safey here with Chris Ballas and Anthony Broom getting the thumbs down from Chris there. Uh, a little corny there, but it's Hawaii week, Michigan against Hawaii. So we'll preview uh, that game Saturday night at the Big House. Michigan coming off of a 51 to 7 win over Colorado State. Now, cupcake game number two is up next. Uh, 51 and a half point favorites, 52 some places. So crazy. And the M Live was reporting that was the biggest point spread of in Michigan football history. So uh, here we go. Get excited for that. Um, not going to be a barn burner probably, but Hawaii, um, still some storylines here with JJ McCarthy getting his first start. We can get into that, but Hawaii kind of, uh, you know, really struggling here to, you know, start the season to put it mildly under first year head coach, Timmy Chang, former quarterback, of course, back in the early two thousands, who did a great job for them. He threw for, I think it was like over 14,000 yards or something like that, obviously back in the the days when they were having some success under June Jones, but um, controversy last year with Todd Graham, 20 guys leave. He had uh, allegations about mistreatment of the players. Then they come in and and hire Chang. He wasn't their first choice, but uh, he's young and unproven, but was kind of moving his way up the ranks. And here we are. They were outscored 112 to 27 against Vanderbilt in Western Kentucky to start off the season. Vanderbilt, by the way, last week only beat Elon from the FCS by 11 points uh, after that. So not, uh, you know, not the best start here for Hawaii, but um, just, uh, you know, opening thoughts, I guess, on this matchup from you guys. Next. That's what I, that's my thought. It's like, but the next game is UConn. So, you know what, it is what it is. And it's one of those games where uh, you hope that nobody gets hurt. You want to see JJ McCarthy sling it. And again, I don't think it's going to tell us a whole lot unless one of these guys struggles, unless McCarthy struggles against uh, Hawaii or Cade McNamara struggles against Hawaii. uh, Yeah, Hawaii, like he did against CSU. So but I think it's an opportunity here for J.J. McCarthy to take another step. And we said in the fall, we said in the spring that it wouldn't surprise at all if J.J. McCarthy with his unbelievable skill set and physical tools has a chance to take the job and and would take the job by Big Ten season. Uh, I think he took a step towards that in in game one, partially because Cade McNamara just didn't play well. So, uh, But J.J. McCarthy, it's clear, uh, has the skills to be an outstanding quarterback. And so let him sling it. Let, let him go out there and throw it 30 times. I don't care if it's 30 times in the first half. Work on the things. You know what? You're going to win the game anyway. So work on the things that need work. I want to see some receivers getting some separation downfield. These guys, I think, are getting a little bit itchy for the ball, fellas, from everything we've heard, and, and rightfully so. You know what? You've got weapons. You've got to use them. So that, that's what I'll be watching for. And then the defense against the run. Hawaii's got a solid – ish uh, not solid but that's that i guess the strength of their team is the offensive line so they're going to try to run the ball a little bit stifle them up front and you know what i want to see them dominate there as well so this is going to be one of those name your score types of games and the only question really is whether or not hawaii scores probably yeah they were super close to that first i think when clayton and i looked it up their first shot since the northwestern game in 2015 so oh so close to that list this week i think they they're definitely on alert for that this time around. I mean, neither of those two teams that Hawaii played to open the year are barn burners by any stretch of the imagination. Vanderbilt is probably still the worst team in the SEC, and Hawaii made them look like Alabama. So, again, pick your score. I, I think that's basically what it is. And, um, you know, I don't know that we'll see J.J. McCarthy throw 30 times in the game. Uh, it would be great. It would be fun to see. I mean, we want to see – as much of that as we can and and get as much of that on film so we can, so they can evaluate those guys and we can, we have our debate fodder to talk about. But for me, it's less about like, we know, we know what he brings from a dual threat perspective. We know what he brings from an arm talent perspective. Everything flowed a little better on Saturday with him in the game. Mind you, it was what, maybe 10, 12 snaps he got in the whole game. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but 11. You know, yeah. It's all about 11. Well, see, split the difference. I was right there. Right in the middle. Um, <laughs> so for me, it's less about, wow, is JJ going to rip it, you know, rip a post route 50, 60 yards down the field, or is he going to, you know, have an 80 yard touchdown run? To me, it's more, you know, what do your pre snap reads look like? What does your execution look like? What is, you know, the one we keep going back to this, the throws out to the numbers or the hash marks, the sideline, what does that look like? How quickly is the ball coming out there? So those are the things to me that 
tell me if there's separation between him and McNamara uh, moving forward. Cause it, it is the little things that separate them. I mean, they both have those, their, their share of traits that they bring to the table. JJ is obviously objectively more dangerous as a dual threat, but you know, if he can show that it looks sharp and it looks crisp and dominant, you know, people said last week when the pass rush did as well as it did, Oh, well, what does it make? It was Colorado state. That's what it's supposed to look like against a team that you dominate. And it would be the same way this weekend with the offense. Uh, you know, how how crisp do you look? How concise are the reads? Are you making the plays that present themselves? So, yeah, the the let J.J. Cook stuff would be a lot of fun. But I think there's a little more to it than that. And, and I'm excited to see how it plays out regardless. Uh, let me qualify that by saying that's really, in my opinion, how you're going to find out what he is because of the, you know, the things we've heard about the decision making and in practice, you know, what making the right throw and, you know, not turning the ball over and things like that. So to me, that's the way if you hand it off, you know, 40 times or whatever, you know, when he's back there, what are you going to learn? Uh, you know, what well, yeah, we also for, know. Right. For example, like last year when they played Northern Illinois, I mean, I think Cade was nine for 11 and that yep. wasn't, I mean, that wasn't enough of a referendum on you know what he right. was or what his place. So yeah, you would like to see as much of that as possible. I just yeah. don't know if we're going to see full shotgun and air raid, like some Michigan fans would prefer to see, but yeah. I'm with you on that. Put as much on tape as you possibly can. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's tough because it, it always goes back to, well, you want to, you know, get ahead early in a game like this and Michigan's run game is probably going to have so much success that, a couple of things. One, they're going to get so many yards, and I think they're going to have some big plays in the run game where you, you may not need to throw it that much. But you do want to challenge J.J. McCarthy and, you know, see what he can do out there. Uh, also important to know that Cade McNamara is going to get, you know, some playing time as well. Will it be around 10, 12 snaps, 11 like J.J. last week? Uh, you know, maybe, probably. Uh, and then you'll see maybe a couple more quarterbacks, including Alex Orgy or Davis Warren or Alan Bowman like we saw. Last week, all those guys except uh, Davis Warren, of course. But this this Hawaii defense is is terrible. I mean, they allowed 404 rushing yards to Vanderbilt, 9.2 yards per carry. They only have three tackles for loss in two games on the season. No sacks. Uh, you know, talking to Billy Hull, who covers the team out in Honolulu, he says there's just no pass rush. You know, I watched a few clips from the Western Kentucky game, and literally the pass rush starts. And those guys are just locked up by, you know, offensive linemen. And again, these are not good teams that they've played so far. So I think JJ is going to be able to run on them in the read option game as well. We saw a lot of that last week, um, you know, and I think there will be some of those big plays. Hawaii's already allowed 14 plays of 20 plus yards. Michigan had only three of those last week. Um, I think it'll be in double digits this week between the run game, some, you know, big chunks in the past game as well. Um, but that's that's kind of my prediction. And, and one of those was uh, Roman's touchdown last week, too, out of the three. So really, they didn't break some of those runs. And we heard Mike Hart talk about that this week. You know, it's just kind of that one extra tackle. And Colorado State was loading the box and maybe Hawaii will do the same this week. But um, I think this is a much worse team. And I think we're going to see some of those big plays. But uh, anything else you guys are expecting to see from the Michigan offense? Looks like it should be um, at least potentially the starting offensive line back intact. Ryan Hayes, Jim Harbaugh said on Monday night he expects him to play. Carson Barnhart, who replaced him last week, will be held out with a sprained ankle. But, um, you know, finally we'll get a little more of a read of what this offensive line is like. But, again, talking about that defensive front for Hawaii, we're not going to learn, you know, much more than a little bit. Probably not. Uh, only if they struggle, right? And then we'll be like, wow, yeah. you know, these guys need to. Or if they struggle to stop the run or something like that, which we don't anticipate. So, you know, even if you sleepwalk through this game, you're going you're gonna to blow them out. So that's just the way it is. That's So basically that's about it. And, uh, you know, it's one of those guarantee games. This is probably the biggest guarantee in Michigan history. The only question mark is, you know, what what, what are they going to do? Are they going to name the score? Are they going to put in the backups in the third quarter? How many guys are going to play type of thing? So, and I do want to see the offensive line together. I, I thought they missed Ryan Hayes in there last week. it will be nice to have him back out there and get these guys some playing time together. Loved what I saw from Olu Oluwatimi last week. He's only going to get better as well. So I think that line still has some room to improve as well. Trente Jones at right tackle. So other than that, let's just uh let's move on to UConn and then hammer them and get ready for the Big Ten yeah I'm with you for the most part I think offensive line uh this piece hasn't come out yet but it is kind of my position group of the week to watch in a game where you win you're gonna win every single matchup you would think in terms of the guy across from you I want to see those guys dominate I thought last week there were times where they looked a step slow 
Obviously, there was some shuffling. Uh, Trevor Keegan, for as great as it is that he slimmed down 40 pounds, I think uh, held his own at left tackle, but he's an inside guy. So to have all those guys back together uh, for what will be the first time on the field in a game this year, I think is going to be something to watch. And you know, Trent A. Jones had some really good reps last week and also uh, got beat a few times. So I want to see him kind of put it together. And other than that, I mean, it's you're just looking for for growth, development, and and frankly, domination. I mean, that's you keep calling it a name your score game. That's what it has to look like. I mean, anything less than that would be disappointing. Before we move on, just to the Hawaii offense, basically just as bad as the Hawaii defense, 3.3 yards per pass attempt, and they attempt 49 and a half of those per game, which is six most, most in the country running that run and shoot type of offense, um, you know, that you've seen out of Hawaii for a long time. Mike Elson wants more pressure from his Michigan edge rushers uh, in the defensive line as a whole and going back and rewatching the game and then looking at some of the, you know, stats and everything. I think he's right. I mean, seven of the sacks, you know, they had seven sacks last week, but six of those came when they blitzed brought five or more guys. So I think he wants more pressure with four. Um, and, you know, we'll see how that, I, I think that will probably happen this week. But again, as Chris, you mentioned Hawaii 109 combined starts returning from that offensive line. So it has experience. Um, and then the last thing I had on Hawaii is just Matthew Shipley, their kicker, is actually probably their best player, which could be the case for Michigan, too. He was a Lou Groza Award semifinalist. So keep an eye out. If they get in field goal range, uh, that may kill the shutout. I am predicting a shutout, and we'll talk about our predictions in a second here. But uh, keep an eye out for Matthew Shipley, maybe one of the best players on the field on Saturday night. Well, <laughs> if that's when you, you know what that's and that's saying something right if that's your guy so that's why i pr predicted yeah. 55 to 3 and i said you know what they're, they're, you know what all it takes is one busted coverage or something like that getting field goal range and a guy makes a kick so uh, i think i think harbaugh will call off the dogs even yeah. if he does they could eclipse 55 points so i don't think there's any question about it so uh, you know in game two he's going to want to play a lot of guys because in big 10 play you know how jim harbaugh is with his guys he wants to those guys that scout team guys and everything else this is their opportunity to play he's going to want to get him in there i think and they'll call off the dogs a little bit hopefully run the ball in the fourth quarter and we can get out of there by about two in the morning yeah there are times there have been times in the jim harbaugh era where he will just decide to choose violent on a particular day and just <laughs> keep the boot on the throat i don't think he's going to do that to poor timmy chang i mean it might just happen regardless because of just how the talent disparity but if you're going to pick and choose your battle this year of who you're going to kind of run it up against, I think there are, there are definitely other teams on the schedule, uh, especially in Big Ten play, that you might want to do that on. So um, <clears throat> Michigan State. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's all I'm looking for. Um, just just dominate. Just take care of business. Uh, I don't know what else. I mean, we, we could talk predictions all day, but yeah, um, this, this is uh, – I'm waiting for – I'm eagerly awaiting some drama and some adversity. I guess we'll put it that way because that's where you'll learn about this team. Yeah, and we're not going to get that on Saturday night. Uh, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be going for two like they did against Rutgers in 2016 when they won 78 to nothing. Uh, right. I think they'll call him off at some point. And to Chris, to your point, Jim said on Monday that he wants to at some point this season have a roster full of 130 guys that have all played in game action at one point. I believe he said they're close to 100. Uh, they played 84 in that first game, but some other guys have played in the past. So. Uh, could be on our way to that. So this would be probably the opportunity. I know they have UConn next week, but UConn yeah. looks a little better than Hawaii. Um, before we get to our actual score predictions and then uh, talk uh, about a couple of more games from around the country, let's talk about Prize Picks, our great sponsor uh, over the last couple of weeks here starting out. Football is back. There isn't a better way to enjoy watching your favorite team than by playing daily fantasy with our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the simplest form of real money daily fantasy sports and just pits you against the numbers. Whether you're a fantasy sports nut or a casual fan looking to add some excitement to the games, Prize Picks is, is the perfect game for you. It's the best way to have action on the game in states like Michigan, Kentucky, Alabama, Florida, Texas, Georgia, and over 70% of the United States. Prize Picks is currently operational in over 30 states and Canada, but not Ontario. You simply select two to five players and predict if they will go more or less than their prize picks projection. You can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. Uh, we all put in picks again for this week. Um, mine is interesting. So they were running a promo with Tom Brady. Uh, more than half 
of a passing yard. So I took that and I power played that with Blake Corum, more than a hundred and a half rushing yards. Um, so a little Michigan, you know, NFL type of thing for week one of the NFL. Uh, the Bucks play the Cowboys this weekend. But what do you guys have for your picks? Yeah, I took the Brady one. <laughs> I mean, it's right. And I think it's actually 294.5. So I don't know that he'll get over that, but um, we got the, we got the 0.5. So you take that. I took Josh Allen and the under against the Los Angeles Rams defense tonight, just because uh, Ryan Tice, it's going to make him mad. So uh, the Buffalo (laughs) Bills and, uh, and because I don't pay that close attention to it, but I think that uh, I like that Rams defense uh, to hold him in check. Yeah, for Maybe. me, I mean that missed opportunity on my part to not take the Brady one. Although I still have, I still have credit. I could, I could jump in there and do that. Um, so my two picks this week, uh, I stayed in the college game. I'm going less than 100, 100.5 rush yards for Blake Corum, just because uh, didn't do it. Like didn't do it last week, and I don't know that he'll play enough to get there this week. So uh, I'm doing that, and then taking Anthony Richardson, the quarterback from Florida, to throw more then one and a half passing touchdowns uh, Saturday night against Kent state. So nothing super sexy this week on the card. It's a very business business-like effort. Uh, last week I did not do well, uh, but the picks, the prize picks continue. And that's what I have logged. Florida plays Kentucky, right? Is that? Yeah. Did I say Kentucky. Kent state. I said, you said Kent state. State. yeah, you're in oh, trouble um, now. Yeah. Wow. Well, it just said no. I was just making sure because we're going to talk about that game real quick here in a second. So, um, and then Hutch, our, our fantastic producer, has put in his picks. He has Dylan Gabriel, Oklahoma's quarterback, more than 270 and a half passing yards against Kent State. There you go. Um, and then Old Dominion's running back Blake Watsos will have more than 70 and a half rushing yards against Eastern Carolina, who almost beat NC State. Look at Hutch uh, coming up with these obscure. Uh, games man he's deep be. in it yeah he is awesome yeah love it so download the prize picks app or visit prizepicks.com sign up using the code wolverine <laughs> gotcha. uh to get an instant 100 percent bonus up to 100 dollars on your first deposit so if you deposit 100 dollars, prize picks will give you 100 dollars. if you deposit 50 prize picks will give you 50 and so on uh don't forget that's the prize picks app or prizepicks.com and the code wolverine to claim your bonus today and take your viewing of your team to the next level this season. Um, So we'll talk about some games from around the country, but first we'll start with our game, Michigan 51 and a half, 52, depending on where you look at it, saw it uh, multiple ways this morning over under at 67. We have our staff picks article, which is always great on the website at the Wolverine.com. So check that out. But I have 73 to nothing. I do have that shutout as I alluded to earlier, maybe, uh, you get that kicker. Uh, I already forgot his name. Uh, you know, who will get that field goal for him? Yeah. So that, that's what I have. But we can talk about offensive player of the game here in a second. But what do you guys have for your scores? 55 to three. I think they call off the dogs and then they run it out, uh, the clock out in the fourth quarter. So you're basically looking at three quarters, right, to score points, in my right. opinion. And then they're going to just, uh, you know, run out the clock in the fourth quarter. So that's why I went lower with the Michigan score. But and then uh, Hawaii comes up with a field goal. You know, all it takes, like I said, is one play and they got a good kicker. So I don't think they'll get the shutout, but it's going to be a dominant performance, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I'm right on the edge of that shutout. I have Michigan winning 61 to three. Again, would it surprise me if they got into the 70s? Absolutely not. Uh, I just feel like it's at a certain point, they will probably be up so much that you're giving almost an entire quarter to your your third and fourth string guys. So that's where I'm going with there. I mean, like I said, it feels like night game, Jaden Davis in town. Not that it has anything to do with J.J. McCarthy or Jaden Davis, but it just feels like the stars are kind of aligning for a bit of a, a mini coronation of sorts, uh, at least in terms of what the fan base, how the fan base views this moving forward. So they'll get the two and zero. They'll do so in a big way and see what you have to clean up. Still, you can still you can still find things on film that didn't go your way in a in a huge blowout. So that's that's something that I think the coaches will fixate on this week as well. Yep. Uh, let's predict who our offensive defensive player of the games will be and a freshman to watch. I got JJ McCarthy on offense. Uh, not a hot take, obviously, but that Hawaii defense, we talked about some of the stuff earlier. Um, they're the only team uh, out of 16 teams that have played two games not to have a sack. I think he's going to have time back there. 
to let those routes develop. They're going to hit on a few big ones, and it's going to be a big night for J.J. McCarthy. Um, I I think if he plays like he did, again, it was a small sample size last week. I think he's probably going to start against UConn, but I don't know if the battle will be over. But, man, we are in for uh, some more quarterback talk, I think, after this, this next game. Yeah, and then Blake Corum, to, for me, I think is going to rip off some big runs. These guys can't stop the run. Uh, these guys are terrible. And I think this is one of those games where – they want it. They're concentrating on the explosive plays right in the running game. Again, Mike Hart had said that. So I think you're going to see Corum rip off two or three of those uh, on Saturday and before he gets a rest. Yeah. I mean, JJ McCarthy would be the easy one, but I'm going to go with the flying Hawaiian this week. Roman Wilson will be uh, our offensive player of the week. I think he scores another long touchdown, uh, has a couple more catches this week to add to his resume. So looking forward to that. Um, did you guys do often? Did you guys do defense already? Or did Not I? Yet. No. Go ahead. Start it. Yeah. All right, well, I'll start that one too. Uh, I'm going to keep the train rolling for Jalen Harrell. I thought that was a guy who PFF thought it was Michigan's best defensive player on the field last week. Uh, my eyeballs sort of uh, uh, back that up. Uh, he graded out highly. We've said all along that if he can prove to be a three down guy and, and hold up in coverage and, and set an edge and run support and then also get to the quarterback. He's going to have a huge year. Uh, I liked what I saw last week. I'm going to keep the train rolling there. Yeah, we'd heard that he had really improved as a pass rusher. I think we're seeing that now. And uh, this guy just is a football player. And I love that. You know, Jim Harbaugh finds those guys. I'm going to be writing a column about that tomorrow. But, you know, some of these guys that people say, oh, you know, he's a tweener or this and that, or he's not fast enough. You know what? Jim Harbaugh likes football players. Jalen Errol is a football player. So like him. Uh, defensively, I'm going to go with, let's say, uh, wow. I'm going to go with Junior Colson having a monster game. I think he's going to get some sacks too. I think they're going to use him a little bit more. They don't have to, uh, but you know what? And that was one thing where Jesse Minner said, we have some packages for our linebackers that we didn't show. I think they're going to let him eat a little bit and then uh, we'll see what happens. So, but I like him. I, I like that kid. That kid's going to be a, it could, could be a first round pick as a linebacker with his size and his speed. And we're starting to see what all the hype was about. No doubt. I have Junior Colson, too. I love the way he was kind of all over the field, kind of like Jalen Harrell. Last week, you saw it with Colorado State running a lot of those short passes. Uh, linebackers were kind of dropping and then really getting to the football. So I think he's going to have he, – he led the team with 10 tackles last week. I think he'll probably lead the team again. Um, and a bright spot, too, for Michigan with playing a similar offense. Last week, PFF said they had no missed tackles from the secondary – on any pass plays that's huge when you're playing teams that are just trying to get it out and run these option routes and things like that a lot of motion where they're trying to confuse you if you can stay disciplined i think michigan will uh then that's going to make this you know make life easier for the whole the whole flow of this game um freshman to watch i got will johnson i think he's going to have an interception i think he's going to make up for his touchdown that he allowed uh, i think he's going to get a lot of reps after the ones are kind of in there we saw him come in in the second quarter last week i think we'll see him earlier um, he did make a nice play on the ball uh, on the first target that came his way and then allowed that touchdown. But as Jim Harbaugh said, he'll learn from it. And as Jim Harbaugh says, a lot of players make their most improvement from game one to game two or from their first season to the second season. I think we'll see Will have a nice day. Yeah, I like Colston Loveland on catching a touchdown pass, his first career touchdown pass from uh, J.J. McCarthy. That kid's a stud. And, and and speaking to people, we'll talk about this in our Inside the Fort tomorrow, but this kid is absolutely a next-level player. So another one of those guys where you say, boy, the future's really bright for that room because that tight end room is as deep as we've ever seen it. So uh, watch uh, watch for him. He's going to play after Eric All and Luke Schoonmaker, Luke Schoonmaker sitting, and I think he's going to get a couple catches. Another Jay Harbaugh fine. Just put some respect on that man's name, yep. everyone. So, yeah, this, I mean, God, you could go a number of directions here. They have so many guys that sort of flashed last week. I'll stay in the pass rush. I'll go with Derek Moore. I think he'll notch a sack this week. I think he, again, I've talked about before how I think what, what you're seeing from Jalen Harrell now is, I think, kind of the archetype of what his role might look like moving forward, uh, that being Derek Moore. So I'm going to go with him to notch a sack on Saturday and, um, you know, be disruptive again. He, to me, he was one of the three or four best pass rushers on the field in that game last week, which is pretty impressive given how many guys got to the quarterback. Yeah. And some of his bull rushes for a freshman. I mean, he just looks like he's at a different level, uh, you know, than most freshmen. So uh, great picks there. Um, our last thing we'll wrap up with our segment known as no man knows the future. 
Uh, we will try to predict the future, but it, no man knows the future. Um, some decent games here this weekend. Not as good as the week one slate, but Iowa State at Iowa. Iowa, a three-and-a-half-point favorite. The over-under is set at a very low 40. Um, <laughs> Iowa, obviously, <laughs> last week won 7-3 over South Dakota State. And you may say, oh, yeah, they got a touchdown, and you know they held South Dakota State to a field goal. No, no, no. Iowa scored a field goal and two safeties. Um, this matchup, though, you know, Iowa State won 42-10 over Southeast Missouri State of the FCS, so not a ton to learn there. Iowa, Iowa has won six straight. This game's at home. Call me crazy. I may look dumb for this, but I think Iowa is going to cover this. Um, Iowa's won six straight against Iowa State. Is this at Iowa? Or it's at Iowa. This at Iowa. Okay, I'd read it wrong then. I think Iowa State's going to win, and I think uh, Iowa is so terrible offensively that uh, it's it's unbelievable. It was unbelievable watching that game. It looked like it looked like a snowball game type game from 1951 Michigan Ohio State without the snow. You know the weather was great, but it's like how soon can we punt it inside the 20, please, so that we don't have to embarrass ourselves with our offense anymore. Is what it was. So I think Iowa State gets the monkey off its back and beats Iowa this, this week uh, in a low scoring game. Yeah, Iowa State. I mean, when you go through the betting stuff on on them in this game, I mean, just always under. They're one four and one against the spread in their last six games against Iowa. It will pain. It, it might be painful uh, to Clayton for me to say this, but I'm rolling with the fight in Matt Campbell's this week. Uh, I think that they will get the win. Um, God, Iowa. I can't. They're too. Like I can't forget one nine months ago seeing Iowa barely being able to like attempt to throw the football and then last week was they were missing most of their wide receivers but i think they have there are some pretty bad structural cracks in in that offensive operation right now so they're going to drag you down they're going to get you into a rock fight uh, which michigan in a couple weeks will have to be on high alert for but i mean three and a half i don't know if iowa can score enough to win by three and a half two safeties how bad they look right now (laughs) two safeties on average come on you're not paying attention to the stats so (laughs) <laughs> we'll see what Matt Campbell can do too. I mean, he, right now he quote unquote cannot beat his rival. I guess you, you know, people say that until you do. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Um, Alabama at Texas. This will be noon. So it'll be a good start to the day, but Texas 20 point underdogs at home. Alabama looked incredible last week against Utah state, but you know, Utah state made a bowl last year, 55, nothing Bryce young uh, following up his Heisman performance. I mean, that's a lot of points, but I, I think I'm going to go with Alabama. They'll probably run it up on Sark down there. Um, can't get out of my mind, Anthony, like you with Iowa. I can't get out of my mind, Texas losing to Kansas at home. That was Kansas's first road win in the Big 12 since 2008 uh, last year. So give me Alabama to, to win huge. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Alabama's going to crush them. I think that uh, Nick Saban's going to make a statement here, and uh, and they're going to blow them out. So they've got too much firepower. It's, it's Alabama and Georgia and everybody else right now, guys. That's all there is to it, unfortunately. And I think Alabama makes a statement on Saturday, covers that 20. I'm with, I'm with you. I think Alabama wins by so much that they might even bring Arch Manning back to Tuscaloosa <laughs> with them. Um I this this reeks of a game where Texas fans get amped up that all right here's the measuring stick we're gonna see how far we've come under Sark so far and then they lose by forty and then everyone on the message board's calling for him to get fired so Bama big I have zero qualms about that pick at all yeah it felt like the same thing happened under Tom Herman too we'd be like all right here we go this is this is it and then. Well, okay, we're still not there. You know, we lost by 40, so we'll see what happens there. But um, this one's interesting. Tennessee at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, six-point underdogs. They won kind of the backyard brawl there over West Virginia in a crazy back-and-forth game last Thursday night. Um, Tennessee, 59-10 over Ball State last week. Feels like Tennessee is one of those teams that's just waiting to break through. I don't know. I'll take the points. I'll take Pittsburgh as the underdog at home. It was a great environment. You would think maybe a hangover game, but uh, they had those extra couple of days to kind of get reset and, and prepare. So I'll take them. Yeah, I agree. And uh, it, isn't that Desmond Howard's final four pick? Yeah. Bit? So barely got out, it. We can't yeah. have them out this early, Des. So I'm with yeah. you, man. I think Pittsburgh covers. I don't know who wins. I think Tennessee still sucks, but <laughs> I don't think Pittsburgh's all that great either. So I'll take Pittsburgh. 
Yeah, it, it's pretty funny the non-conference games we get sometimes. Like these are two of the most miserable fan bases in college football. Um, playing for the right to go two and zero. I think I'm going to go Tennessee. I mean, that's been a program that's been uh, been snake bitten a bit. I mean, when things are going right for them, they should be in the mix with a Michigan and you know the Texas. Or you know, they're just one of those schools where college football is better when they're good. Uh, I think Pat Narduzzi is a fraud. I think that Kenny Pickett, uh, like over, like they overplayed their ceiling last year with Kenny Pickett. Uh, and I like Josh Heupel uh, at Tennessee. So I, I think they'll win this one. And uh, but it looks like it could be a fun game though. I think I, that's probably, I'm guessing this will probably be my watch before heading to the press box on Saturday. Well, remember Pat Narduzzi said if they could beat Michigan state the way they did or no, they lost, but, um, who did they beat? And he was saying that they would have won the Big Ten or something like that. Oh, they well, they lost to oh, Michigan State. It was, it was, they barely lost to Michigan State because Kenny Pickett wasn't playing. Oh, so then he claimed a moral claimed victory, a transitive win over Michigan yeah. State. Ergo, a transitive win over Michigan and a quasi Big Ten title. So yeah, it's like you beat the team that finished third in their program. division. Yeah. Um. So that's Pat Narduzzi. Baylor at BYU, 10-15 kick here. So, like, sometimes when we're working after these night games, you just need a game to be on to just kind of feel like the world is still going on and not everyone's <laughs> asleep. Um, and this is going to be a great one. So 10-15 p.m. Eastern kick at BYU. BYU is a three-point favorite. This is a ranked matchup. Uh, some people have Baylor winning the Big 12. Um, BYU coming off a 50-21 to win over USF. Baylor 69-10 over Albany, so you don't learn a ton there but i think it's going to be an electric atmosphere i think uh those fans are going to be going crazy you already see them all over the place clamoring for being ranked higher i don't know what they are 21 or something like that um they feel like they have a good team this year i will take them uh minus three hutch the uh, degenerate gambler put up the wrong line on there just because he wants us to lose initially so and now it's up there and it's right and i like baylor anyway so i think baylor's gonna uh gonna win this game outright i think baylor's a good team another one of desmond howard's final yeah. four picks so boy desmond could <laughs> desmond could see his whole world collapse this, this weekend if, if a couple of his teams lose but i think he's yeah. gonna be safe with baylor this week yeah i'm gonna go with byu only because we need there has to be one group of five team or independent that sort of people complain about all season why they're not ranked higher. Uh, it's not going to be Cincinnati this year. I mean, Notre Dame, it's pedigree, they'll allow them to be in the mix. But um, I think BYU could be a team this year that is like at Cincinnati where people, oh, why aren't they getting more respect? Well, they'll keep it this week. I have them, uh, I think they'll win, I think they'll cover the spread. Uh, that's a weird start time, uh, although it's the, the time zones aren't too different between Baylor and BYU, but I'm going with the Cougars in this one. I think they could be really – I mean, not a playoff caliber team, but I think that's a good football team. Yeah, I just feel like you don't want to play there at night. Um, it just kind of looks scary. So same thing with Utah, honestly. It's something something out there in Utah. But um, last one, we alluded to this with Florida, who does not play Kent State. They play Kentucky at home in the Swamp again. They're six-point favorites. Off of a huge win over Utah um, in a great game back and forth. Kentucky uh, off a 37-13 win over Miami, Ohio. I got Kentucky coming in here um, and winning this game. Will Levis, their quarterback, a top NFL draft prospect, uh, obviously former Penn State quarterback. I like him. I think they're going to come in and win this game. Florida, a little bit too excited maybe about the Utah win and uh, be, you know, be a little, little bit of a letdown. I think Florida wins, but doesn't cover. So does, what does that mean? Do, am I am I picking against the spread here? Yeah. So if I'm picking against the spread, then I'm taking Kentucky with the points. So I think it'll be a tight game, but I think Florida pulls it out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't show prep this week. That's on me. I thought Florida <laughs> was playing Penn State because of prize picks. So shout out prize picks for, uh, for that. Um, yeah, this to me reeks of, again, we talk about these teams that should be good because college football is better when they're good uh, and fan base is getting excited because they're back. I mean, that's a, that was a huge win for Florida last week. Kentucky has been really quality under Mark Stoops. And, and this feels like a come, come back down to earth type of game. Maybe Utah was a little bit overrated coming into the year. Who's to say, but I, I do have Kentucky not only covering this game, but also winning it outright. 
Yeah, this might be, as you talked about, Anthony, last week, like the Billy Napier, you know, first game at Florida. You know, everyone's excited for it, and then they kind of fall flat. Maybe you were one week early on that. I think this could be that. And it would mean more, you know, not to use an SEC cliche because it's an SEC game, though, too. So um, interesting to watch. So a decent slate here. But Michigan, obviously, the the marquee matchup of the weekend, Michigan-Hawaii, 8 o'clock on Big Ten Network. Jake Butt. Shout out to him. He'll be on his first call here in the uh, in the regular season. So excited to watch that back. Uh, that is our show, everybody, for this week. Enjoy the games this weekend, and we'll see you next week.